The best-selling book in America last week wasn't anything by J.K. Rowling. It was a tract called White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. It's a hit, and not a small hit. White Fragility has sold so many copies that the paperback edition is out of stock on Amazon. Schools and companies across the country are ordering it in bulk. Deloitte is pushing it, so is NBC and Harvard Business School. The CEO of American Airlines was recently photographed reading the book. This fall, white fragility is likely to be required reading at your children's school. You may soon be told to study it on a corporate retreat. So it's worth knowing what it is. What's it about exactly? We read the book and we'll sum it up for you in four words. White people are racist. Not just racist white people, all white people, whether they're six years old or 100 years old, all of them are by definition racist. They are racist because they are white. Only white people are racist. No one else is. Robin D'Angelo tells people this for a living. She's a professional anti-racist educator. She shuttles between schools and boardrooms telling people that their DNA make them evil. She makes big money doing this. Last year, for example, the University of Kentucky, a publicly funded university, paid D'Angelo $12,000 for two hours of this message. The school could have used that money to give poor black kids an education, but instead they handed the cash, that's more than a third of what the average American makes in a year, to a not very bright white lady to tell them they're racist. In other words, Robin D'Angelo has a very good gig. Of course, not everyone likes her message. Telling people they're racists is fine if they actually are racists. But what if they're not racists? And most people in this country are not. Well, let's see, how would you like it if someone called you a child molester or a wife beater? You probably wouldn't like it very much. In fact, you could lose your job for that. You could lose your friends. You could even lose your family. You might feel pretty threatened by that accusation. Aha, says Robin D'Angelo. That means you're guilty of racism. Feeling threatened is definitive proof that you're a racist. You're defensive. You've got white fragility, hence the title of the book. By the way, if you're not threatened when someone publicly denounces you as racist, that is also proof that you're a racist. Either way, my friend, you are a racist. Logic is clearly not Robin D'Angelo's specialty. Neither is literate writing or clear thinking. She is a complete and total idiot. That's one thing you learn by the end of her book. And yet our leaders treat Robin D'Angelo with great respect. They think she's a genius. That tells you everything about them and also the moment we're living in. The dumbest people suddenly have the most power. In the book, D'Angelo goes on to make a number of other ridiculously false claims, laughably false. Some of them are so obviously the opposite of what is actually true, you've got to imagine she was grinning as she typed the manuscript. Will they believe this? Yes. In America, D'Angelo writes, quote, we are socially penalized for challenging racism. Really? Where and how? The country the rest of us live in, the United States of America, hates racism. Hating racism is effectively our national religion. Every organization we have is organized to stamp it out. Commit racism and the FBI shows up. Come on, it's just too absurd to be real. But Robin D'Angelo isn't really trying to convince anyone. The real point of her book is to defeat and demoralize you. D'Angelo claims that everything you really want Everything that people of every color really want in every society in the world is a sign of white racism. You want to live in a safe neighborhood? You're racist for that. You want to send your kids to a decent school? You're a racist for that. All of your dreams are racism. And the only way to atone for this racism is to give up those dreams, to abandon your aspirations and make sure that your family lives a much worse life. For white people, D'Angelo writes, quote, discomfort is necessary and important. Needless to say, D'Angelo does not address the millions of white people in this country who already live in perpetual discomfort because they are impoverished. She doesn't mention the entire counties in rural America where virtually no adult man has a full-time job, where there are no dentists because no one can afford to go to the dentist. Robin D'Angelo has never met people like that. No doubt she would hate them if she did. Instead, D'Angelo's book is effectively addressed to entitled urban professionals as silly and frivolous and self-loathing as she is, her friends. In D'Angelo's world, economics play no role in anything. They don't matter. Everyone she knows has a high-status job and a secure job. They're not worried about unemployment. They don't care about income inequality. They're on the right side of it. These aren't problems for them. Remember, D'Angelo herself gets paid $6,000 an hour to talk. She's not concerned about paying the rent. 
And in fact, D'Angelo explains at one point, worrying about economic injustice is just another symptom of, brace yourself here, racism, of white fragility. Get it? Maybe you're starting to understand why corporate America absolutely loves this book. Why? Because Robin D'Angelo absolves them of their crimes. Apple and the health insurers and the credit card companies get off scot-free because the real problem, Robin D'Angelo tells them, is white racism. And what a relief that is for them to learn. $6,000 an hour is a small indulgence to pay for that kind of forgiveness. Thank you, Reverend D'Angelo. We appreciate the house call. In sum, White Fragility is an utterly ridiculous book. Its ironies are so profound they make your head spin. A book about racism that is far more aggressively racist than anything Louis Farrakhan has ever written. A book that claims to side with black people but instead patronizes them and demeans them like their children. A book about systemic injustice that is in fact itself a sly defense of the very people perpetuating the worst injustices in our society. Everything about white fragility is poisonous garbage, and that's not an overstatement. And that will be obvious to you the second your kids bring it home from school, or the moment the corporate HR director in your office lays a copy of it on your desk. And you should say so when that happens. Don't be passive. Speak up loudly. It is your right to disagree with Robin D'Angelo. What she says is wrong, it's crazy, it's destructive, and it foments hatred. We are Americans. We're allowed to do that. The second we are forced to accept the premises of white fragility, we won't be Americans. Our great senators. Hi, Chuck. He used to love me when I was a Democrat, you know. <laughs> <laughs>